All right, guys, back here on Southeast of 14 with Max Barr. As we said, the coaching carousel is about to heat up in the SEC, and uh, one vacancy has been filled. Vanderbilt is going to hire James Madison, head coach Mark Byington. His team just finished up on Sunday. Uh, they did lose big to Duke in the second round of the NCAA tournament, but uh, that is not necessarily an indicator of a coach's overall uh, skill level. So uh, a lot of teams have lost to Duke over the years in the tournament. But before we get there, let's tell you about our friends at Bet Online, which, uh, as always, uh, Chris is not here to read these. I am left scrambling. Vanderbilt was not left scrambling. Apparently, they hired Mike Bryant. But uh, let's talk about uh, this particular uh, Bet Online here. Always our friends there. Great sponsor here at the channel. Uh, tournaments here, as you know. Bet Online, your bracket headquarters for the season. Best bracket contest out there, odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship. You ask us the most uh, up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime your desktop or mobile devices. Uh, so head on over to Bet Online today, get in on the action. Remember, use that promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, Bet Online. The game starts here. All right. Vanderbilt fans want to know, what should they think about Mark Byington? I will tell you exactly just my initial quick thoughts. Max can give me your quick thoughts. We'll We'll go a little bit deeper. Um, yeah. Someone asked me on Twitter, quick thoughts. All right, here were the five bullet points I gave them. I'll do this essay style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great offensive mind. That's the first thing I think that comes to, to mind, I guess, pun intended. A lot of people are going to tell you that, you know, the offensive style is something that had to be very appealing here for Vanderbilt, I think, to look at it and see someone. And, and Max will pull up the numbers in just a few minutes. I mean, they do play an up-tempo style. Byington's kind of played that. At James Madison, even going back to Georgia Southern, um, I think they've been top 85-ish in Ken Palm and adjusted tempo over the past six seasons, so he has as a coach. So that tells you that he's really leaned into that. Uh, that is his philosophy. Um, and I've got some interesting stuff, which we'll talk about more probably throughout uh, you know, the next week or so as we, we talk about this higher a little bit more. But there is going to be a lot of people, I think the one thing you will see here is this is going to be an offense that you would think players would be excited about playing uh, in because of the, the way they're going to play and the the tempo nature, the transition nature of, of the offense and all those things. And like I said, we'll get into this a little bit more. Um, but I think that is something that's appealing probably and, and was appealing from Vanderbilt's perspective is you have someone who will be able to recruit to a very – appealing offense but i think something else to keep in mind here like this is going to be a little bit different than what jerry stackhouse did because you remember max jerry stackhouse also had some good offense but it was a little bit more i think controlled um this will be a little bit more kind of free-flowing and i know vanderbilt fans are going to hear that and get a little bit nervous because there was a former coach they had that was a little bit more free-flowing offensively this is not going to be that uh but there's, there's a happy medium there, and I think that's something that kind of stands out with my first bullet point here, Max, uh, in terms of the offense. Yeah, um, the tempo is the key there. Um, you've got – and from Georgia Southern, too. Um, we'll pull up the numbers here in a little bit, but from the moment he got at Georgia Southern, every year a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster until about around COVID, uh, and then every, every year has been top 100 in adjusted tempo. Um, and the word that you said uh, that I was thinking of was free flowing. And that's I think that's the that's the key word. Uh, very low turnover rate for his teams, but also a low assist rate. So you're looking at one on one advantages, mismatches, getting switches on pick and rolls and finding the mismatch down low, letting a guy beat his mismatch. Those type of things. Uh, James Madison did that a ton this year with Terrence Edwards. Uh, TJ Bickerstaff and some of the other guys. Speaking of Bickerstaff, um, he can recruit. Byington can recruit transfers. Bickerstaff from from BC, from Boston College, ACC transfer. You got Raekwon Horton from Charleston, a very good program who was in the NCAA tournament this year. Uh, and, and Noah Friedel, another starter, South Dakota State two years ago, another NCAA tournament team. So he's got a he's got a roster right now that he's built up over a few years. That's a nice little mix of freshmen and transfers from different years. So he can build a roster too. He's shown that. Yeah. Positionless basketball is the theme of this era. And I yeah. think this is probably something where you'll see them 
spacing and positionless basketball. Those are things that seem to win out in this era. And I think that they have leaned into that as a staff. And so, yes. And that kind of ties me to my second bullet point here. And this is, I said this for a reason, but I'm like, at the very least, they'll be entertaining to watch. And and I feel like here's the thing, right? Am I going to tell you right now that hiring Mark Byington means Vanderbilt's going to finish in the top five in the SEC for the next decade? No, I can't possibly say that. But if you just want to say, how do we make progress to be a consistent team that is hovering around the bubble? Would Vanderbilt fans take getting to the NCAA tournament every every other year right now? Yes. Like based on where things have been, you would take getting there every other year. Um, even if you're not a top five seed or something, right? You would take getting there and at least being in a position where you can do that. I think they'll be entertaining. Um, and I think there's there's something to that. You have to get people back in the building. As we talked about all your long max, it's like you have a fan base that is completely deflated now. And if you want to get people back in the building, it's not always just about going out and making the sexiest hire, the biggest name out there, all this other stuff. It's very simple. It's just about winning games. And so will, will 15,000 people renew their season tickets after the Mark Byington press conference? Probably not. But if Mark Byington starts nine and one or ten and zero oh and all that, they'll be it'll be okay. And if they're entertaining to watch, if they're like, man, you got to go watch the Vanderbilt team, they're not quite there yet, but they can get there because they're playing this style and everything we just mentioned. That goes a long way. Um, knowing that there are going to be limitations at Vanderbilt, they're not going to have the same ceiling that that a lot of other SEC schools are going to have. Like it or not, they're not Kentucky. Um, you know, they're not some of these others, right? It's just it's the nature of where things are. But yeah. In this current landscape, it's NIL, it's transfers, it's all this stuff. And trust me, we're going to get to that one as the last point that I have on my list. But, hey, give me an entertaining team to watch. I'll show up if you just give me a reason to feel like we're going somewhere. And I feel like they'll they'll give them that at the very least. Well, hey, we just had that happen this year in the SEC. Look at what Beard did at Ole Miss. I mean, hey, they wanted to make that tournament. They They had big goals in year one. Uh, there was there was no rebuild plan for for Beard and his his staff, but hey, they won games. They were they got a ranking in the AP poll for a week or two. The students started showing up, community started showing up, and now there's the big H word, Blake. Hope. That's what it's all about. Now there's hope for the program. People are interested. There's there's more buzz around it. That's that might be the biggest thing just right off the top here for Vandy is just, Hey, now, now we got some hope. Let's see what, let's see what this does here. You know, it's just it's a new, it's a new beginning. Yeah. And, and you've always got to give it a guy a chance. Like you can't just go in and just be the ultimate pessimist. Um, yeah. You've got to give a guy a chance. And, and that's takes me to point number three here. He he's rebuilt two programs and yeah. two, two, two programs where it's tough. Right. And, He's going to be rebuilding a program here. If it's going to be number three, this is the perfect criteria for it when you look at kind of where Vanderbilt is at right now. Um, Georgia Southern, and I'll I'll let Max pull this up on the screen now. You're going to see a lot of different stats. All right, so I think one of the things that will stand out for Vanderbilt fans here is you're going to look at this and you're not going to see a lot of NCAA tournament appearances. And like I said, I think that's a fair concern because that's exactly what Vanderbilt fans want. They just they're starving for NCAA tournament appearances at this point. And there's only one of those um here on this resume. You're looking at the Ken Palm profile for Mark Byington here. And look, that one came this year. Um it's pretty good yeah. when that one comes in a year. We go thirty two and four. <laughs> so not bad. Uh but again, there there's nowhere else to be found in terms of the NCAA tournament. So one right. one of those bids in twelve years is not gonna be anything or that it's going to be the one big thing I think Vanderbilt the fans are going to have a hang up on. And if this does not work out, they will go back to this probably and say it was right there all along. But I do think you have to also, if you want to look at it from the optimistic side, context is important. Not every job is the same. Georgia Southern's a tough job. James Madison, not the easiest job. Also, they just moved to a new conference where they found success early here. Uh, but I think, again, he's rebuilt both programs. Uh, he did a great job. I think Georgia Southern is kind of taking them there to that point. And you're going to say, well, there's a couple of those dips along the way. Sure. But I think what's important here, Max, is like th- these are not – these are places where to – not James Madison necessarily because this year they'd have been fine, right? But Georgia Southern, you have to win the NCAA tournament or you have to win the conference tournament to get into the NCAA right. tournament. 
So that has a lot to do with it. And so I think at times it's a completely different conversation. Uh, whereas at Vanderbilt, look, if he goes 22 and 11 at Vanderbilt, he's probably getting an NCAA tournament. So um, again, context is needed. I wouldn't just go all in on this, but I do think it's fair to say if it ultimately does not work out, which we have no idea if it will or won't, um, you, you fans will look back on this and say, how did we think it was going to because of the lack of tournament appearances slash success? Yeah, and you also have to understand the context of this win at James Madison. It hasn't been done in over 40 years at James Madison. Like that that one win is is really big for the whole for the program's history. Um and if you look at on right on the left, right before the team name, there's a little number in between the year and the name. That's their Ken Palm ranking that they finished that year. Go all the way down to 2014 where he took over Georgia Southern. You're flirting with with 300s. You're you're flirting with one of the one of the bottom tier teams in the country. Yeah. And then 2019, 2020. I know COVID hit in 2020, but 103, 134, 152 in 2018. Now you're flirting with the top 100. Go up to James Madison. Takes over during COVID. 177, 227. Oh, what's this? Now we're flirting with the top sixty. Like you, you can just you can see the the building that he does, uh, where he goes, and then these numbers are they're pro- it's probably gonna all look like craziness to you guys, but this right here, ADJT is tempo, okay, and the little number underneath the highlighted number is their national rank. So you got top eighty seven nationally in adjusted tempo for the last. Six coached teams by Mark Byington. So you're going to get that pace. Um, and then if we move along a little bit here, just sliding down to show some some different stats. Here, TO percentage right here is offensive turnover rate. Look at that. Yeah. Never had a season outside the top 100 since 2017. Okay, so you're going to get a fun offense. All right, if you're... If there's anything to be excited for, hopeful for at the baseline, this offense, historically, it might not happen right away in year one. It's pretty hard to do for any coach taking over a program, but this offense has a historical presence here being pretty fun. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the strongest points. Like I said, I think Vandy fans have made it pretty clear. One of the weaker points of the resume just would be the lack of tournament success. But yeah. like you said, if you look at it, he's had teams that he's taken over that were just kind of in the dumps. And all of a sudden, you know, they, they've become much better teams and, and much better situations, um, you know, since he since he got there. So I think that's definitely something that you see. And remember, too, context you mentioned is important. Yeah. Think of how much the game has changed in the past five years. Yeah. Like you can look back at 2014, 2016, whatever. We're talking about a completely different landscape in college basketball since that yeah. point. So things have changed so much that if you really look at it, he's had his most success here when kind of when the game started when to change a little changing. bit. That's a great point. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm always going to try to be optimistic, uh, even though I absolutely think it's fair to look at certain criticisms and or hesitations when it comes to anybody. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the case. All right, Max, you can pull that off the screen because I'm going to tell you right now, everything we just said means nothing if the fifth point I have on this list here is not in play. Ooh, Here is the exact question I asked. Will he get the support he needs to win in the SEC from Vanderbilt? That's what this all comes down to. Yeah. He could be the greatest coach in America. He could be the next big thing out there. But if he's not given the resources to get there, it does not matter because – you have to have a situation at Vanderbilt where you already know there are limitations, whether it's the people you bring in, uh, roster-wise, you know, different limitations, academics, all this other stuff. You know they're there. So if you know that going in, you know you have some, some things that could put you a little bit behind everybody else, then you've got to find a way to get an advantage somewhere to be able to out-recruit, to, you know, be competitive every single year with Kentucky, Auburn, Alabama, you know, Arkansas. I know they had a down year, but it's still Arkansas. Um, you know, Florida now clearly surging in the right direction under Todd Golden. Yep. Mississippi State surging in the right direction under Chris Jans. 
um, Texas A&M with Buzz. You know, I, I'm sure I forgot somebody, and I'm sure someone will, will remind me of it. But <laughs> those are just the names. Rick Barnes, Tennessee. Those are just the names that you have to compete against when it comes to getting players and putting together teams that are going to be competitive year after year after year. So I don't think this is on Mark Byington necessarily. I mean, sure it is for him to recruit the roster and all this other stuff, right. but he's got to have the support that he needs there to be successful. If he does not get that and you start to see Vanderbilt wavering here on this thing or that thing or this or that, I don't think it's going to end well in terms of them wanting certain expectations and actually meeting those expectations, no matter how good of a coach he is. Because a lot of good coaches have probably still come through Vanderbilt over the years that have been very skilled at their job. But yet, sometimes it's not always about just how good you are at your job. It's what do you get around it to put you in a position to be successful. And so I'm not saying that's always been the reason. Sure, you've there, there have been bad hires you know, in plenty of places. But this is just one where we can say anything we want about the basketball, but Vanderbilt's got to got to put some stuff into it here. I think they will, but if it's a program reset, you better you better prove it. So, yeah, and I think in in my humble opinion, Blake, I think step one is there's 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 a big man that has not decided what he's doing yet, and if they can if you can keep Ben Allen Lubin. Because yep. I'll tell you what, he's a hot commodity on the market right now. And what does Trilly always say? Sometimes the best gets are the ones you already have. I think that's step one. Keep keep that big man, and you can build around him and start start something from the ground up there. Yeah, going to be important. Um, again, it's all about... It's all about the roster. It's all about what can you do against the gauntlet of coaches you got to go up against in the SEC. Uh, but Mark Byington, not a lot of guys out there coming off a 32 and 4 season, Max. One more thing also. I wanted to mention this. I'm glad I remembered it because I forgot it. John Fenler on Twitter did a study, um, not a study, but researched all the, uh, the roster continuity compared to movement in your final Ken Palm ranking from last year to this year. Um, he did it for all 362 teams, and he found that there was no correlation between how good or bad you do from year to year, from last year to this year, and your roster continuity. It was, yeah. I think, the the number one biggest team and the number two um, was like some team had every team every person back and did terrible, and then Utah State didn't have a single person back and had like one of their best seasons. Um, so if you're all worried about roster continuity and it not working, Hey, it works for some teams. It doesn't work for the other. It's, it's just a matter of getting all the right pieces to fit together. Well, and the last thing I would add is I have seen some people make this comparison based on people discussing Mark Byington since the hire was going to happen. Not saying he's going to accomplish what NATO has accomplished in Alabama, but people are comparing some of the offensive elements that he likes to that in terms of pushing the pace, taking good shots as soon as they're available, those kind of things. And so some interesting things we'll dive into in the offseason when it comes to breaking down what Vanderbilt fans can expect under their new head coach, Mark Byington. But there you go, guys. There's some initial thoughts on what's going on with the hire at Vanderbilt. Um, could we have more to discuss today? Could you see Max and I again today discussing some big coaching news in the SEC? It is very possible. We will find out uh, what happens. But if you want to find out, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We appreciate you guys watching. Uh, check out all of our other coverage here uh, for the NCAA tournament, of course, and we'll have SEC football, basketball stuff as well. Thanks for watching. As always, here at Southeast 14, and we'll talk to you guys here soon.